Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. In this episode, I will talk about our visit to the North Dakota Railway Museum in Mandan, North Dakota. We were driving from our home in northern Nevada to Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada in July 2023. While on our travel, our time was somewhat limited. We managed as many sites and places of rail-related interest as we could. Our travel through North Dakota had us passing close to a rail museum. Our luck seemed to be bad as we arrived somewhat late. Just as we arrived, the museum was closing, but we decided to at least spend some time looking at the outdoor exhibits. As we walked up, we encountered one of the volunteers from the museum. After explaining how far we had come and our limited time, he took us on a personalized tour of the museum. While it is a relatively small museum, it was well laid out and cheerful. Most of the artifacts are in the form of old rail equipment reflecting this area of the country. We found many of them unique and very interesting. One bit of old rail equipment that took Lisa's eye was this small locomotive. Engines like this are often called dinkies. Our best information says this diminutive locomotive was built in 1962 and weighs about 16 tons. It was used by the Burlington Northern Railroad as a yard mule at Glendive, Montana up till 1986. When preparing for this episode, Lisa was extra pleased to find in the Carol Highsmith collection this photo taken just two years prior to our visit. While museums like this let you see many interesting items, they are also most helpful in showcasing the history and how things developed. It is great to be able to get close and see what makes them special, like these two cabooses. This is a Sioux line caboose built in 1913 and is mostly constructed of wood. Clearly, this is the typical little red caboose and what is usually brought to mind by the word caboose. In contrast, this Burlington Northern caboose built in 1954 is all metal. In the later era of rail, cabooses were made of steel so as to be very strong. I think this one looks a bit like a fortress. Do understand that the working life of a caboose is a hard one. When a helper locomotive was needed, a light wooden caboose would have to be switched out of the train to run behind the helper because if the helper locomotive pushed on the frail wooden car, it might crush it. These late steel cabooses were built strong enough to be able to be pushed on to help the train along. It is nice to see them side by side to see their differences. Here is one of the kinds of rail cars known as a hand car as they are propelled by muscle power, most often by hands. Such hand cars were often used to inspect lines or for crews to reach areas that needed repairs. This Sheffield No. 1 Velocipede, built by Fairbanks Morse over a hundred years ago, was operated by moving the double T-shaped handle that is pulled back and pushed forth. Lower down you can see where the legs rest and also push together. Well, it was faster than walking. This display is of what a station office might look like. This station agent appears to be busy at work. Often this kind of office was in a kind of bay in the station building, giving the agent a good view of the tracks. Here is a station cart with luggage and milk cans for a morning train. For a long time across much of the world served by rail, many lines had their early morning trains that stopped in all the stations to pick up milk for delivery to the cities. Such trains were for these reasons known, of course, as milk trains. The inside exhibits cover an array of local and area rail history. Like many museums, they have their own railway, in this case, a very small one, but still rideable. This is where I would normally sign off, but I would like to add this extra piece. 
As I said in one of our early videos about the Mercy train, our family are trying to see how many of the Mercy cars we might visit. Later that same day that we visited the museum, we made our way to Bismarck and saw the North Dakota car. It is located at 612 East Boulevard Avenue. We were most pleased to see that it was undercover and protected. The location is in this nice park area. While looking the car over, even Kuma got in for a close view. Our family has visited a number of Mercy cars. So far to date, they are the cars in Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, and now we can add our fourth car in North Dakota. Perhaps some of you who have seen these cars might leave a comment about your visits. We hope you've enjoyed this look at the North Dakota Railroad Museum. And as always, we'll see you on the train, no matter what state it's in. <laughs>